today we're actually going to jump right in, and I want you to hear the words from our scripture reading today that's before us, Philippians 2, verses 1 through 4. If you've gotten anything at all out of following Christ, if his love has made any difference in your life, if being in a community of the Spirit means anything to you, if you have a heart, if you care, then do me a favor. Agree with each other. Love each other. Be deep-spirited friends. Don't push your way to the front. Don't sweet-talk your way to the top. Put yourself aside and help others get ahead. Don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage. Forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand. What wonderful words of scripture. You know, another version of verses three and four say, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. I love both of those. This is such a rich scripture. Basically, be selfless, lower yourselves, look out for others. That's all. Simple, really, right? Sounds like a great formula for community. I, I think that humans are naturally geared towards self-promotion. Do you know what I mean? We're, we're, we seem to always be taking the next step to get a step higher. We often put ourselves before others. We have a big tendency to think that we're better. It just is kind of our default. You know, what, what if, um, but what if I looked up to you and you're looking up to me? And uh, she looked up to her and he to him. And so on and so on and so on. If everybody is looking up to somebody, no one is getting looked down upon. That, my friends, is a beautiful thing. I want you to think about this. Maybe it needs to be your mantra today. Lower myself so no one is beneath me. Lower myself so no one is beneath me. What does that mean? Well, it kind of means that we're not going to look at someone else's life and then measure our worth by their accomplishments. We're all set apart, remember? There is no one that's better with Jesus. We're, we're just different. Of course, she is in a different place than you are. It's, it's actually physically impossible for four feet to stand in the same exact spot, wouldn't you say? I mean, it would be altogether lovely if four hearts would. Because can you imagine the love that that would bring? But really, when we think about community, we're all standing in a different spot. If we could just admire someone for what they are, instead of adding up the things that people are not, less than becomes less threatened. Today, I, I want you to try to not look at a person only for what they can offer you. And you might be saying to yourself, oh, I never do that. But I bet now you're going to catch yourself when you do. And I don't want you to avoid someone when that something is nothing. We're going to be good and we're going to do good because of who we are. We, we are the beloved of God. And not what we think someone else is or how we have to show up in a certain space. We're just going to lower ourselves so that no one is beneath us. And we're going to lower ourselves so that everyone is above us. And when we do that, where they are, it doesn't matter what someone's story is because you know we're, we're below them. We're holding them up. We're looking them up. We're looking up to them. We are lifting them in the eyes of God. You know, I read a piece of scripture in Ezekiel this week. God was talking to Israel, but just conviction because it can easily uh, you know, apply to us. So, so just think about it this way. Maybe it says, God talking to Florence. I am bringing you back, but not because you deserve it. I am doing it to protect my holy name on which you brought shame while you were scattered among the nations. Who that hit home? I love it. I'm not bringing you home because you deserve it, but because I have a name to uphold. I say I am and so I must be. I say I am love and so I will be in love. Isn't that great? Isn't that a wonderful scripture? And don't we all, don't we want to be that way? As Christians, we should be the standard in the world. We should never lose an opportunity to protect that and to love and to offer mercy. You know, one of my favorite Old Testament stories is in Exodus. Moses is in the middle of a war. His hands are up and he's winning. But he begins to get tired. And his hands, they start to fall when they start to lose. And and and. It, Exodus 17, it literally says, when Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and they put it under him and he sat on it. And the they was Aaron and her. And then Aaron and her, they held, they held hands up, one on each side and one on the other, so that Moses' hands remained steady until sunset. And they were victorious. Two friends saw Moses struggling and they came to help. Moses and his army won that battle because Moses had someone to be the support that he couldn't be. They were there to help not to conquer. You see the difference, right? 
not for your interest, but the interest of others. If you're only serving someone for what you might receive, that's not serving, that's business. You know, I wish I had some pretty words to tie this all together, all of these things, but I don't. Sometimes it is just what it is. No one is above anybody. That is what it means to be selfless. All we're called to do is to love people at least as much as we love ourselves. And in this world of division, it's evidence of our failing, but it doesn't hurt to still try. I think that's selflessness at its finest moment. Let us pray. Oh God, hold us up so that we might hold up others, so that all of us are looking upwards with eyes of love and hope, I pray. Amen. Amen.